welcome once again. I'm William Sinequedi, your teacher, Mathematics P4. Hope you are doing very well. Uh, today, as usual, you are going to have a lesson of mathematics. Uh, but before I get into today's lesson, let's first go back and see where we stopped from last time. Uh, we are under the concept of holes, and uh, when you look at the activity you had last time, I've just picked some few numbers that I can do with you as you watch, as you observe, as you check what you did too, okay? Uh, like we had number one, which was saying, what is a third of 12? What is a third of 12? If you change it into figures, it is a third of 12. It is like they're asking us this one, okay? And you remember how we define the word of in mathematics? It means multiplication. And what does this one mean? How many groups of threes can we get from 12 objects? We said you can make your 12 objects. They can be bottle tops, they can be straws, they can be just short sticks. They can be uh, stones. So assume we have bottle tops, 12 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We want to group them in threes. This, a third, I've said, it is the meaning of this one, okay? So let's count. Three, we make a group. Three, we make a group. Three, we make a group. So we can say 1, 2, 3. This gives us one group. One, two, three, another group. One, two, three, another group. One, two, three gives us another group, okay? Are we ready to count the number of groups we have formed? One, two, three, and four. So we'll just say a third of 12 uh, is giving us four. Do you have it right? Good, good. Hope you understand this answer very well. Uh, before then we go to another number on the same activity. This was number four. Check properly. How many halves make two holes? How many halves? Oh, how many halves can we find in two holes? You remember that very time. Whereby we can, we said, this is a hole. Now this time they are giving us two holes, okay? Let's have our two holes of that kind. Now... How many holes, how many halves are in one hole? We agreed that, uh, so this is a half, this is also a half. If we also have other halves in another hole, this is a half, this is also another half. Just very simple. How many halves now uh, have, have we formed from the two holes? Let's count. We have one, two, three, Oh, just come and say these are four halves that are formed from two holes. Hope this number was answered like that when you check in your activity. We also had number five. It can be simplify, it can be subtract, it can be work out, okay? Still, it's one minus four fifths. In other words, a whole minus four fifths. So if we have one minus four fifths, we have the right to change this whole using five. And say five out of five. Five out of five is the same as five divided by five. Still, it gives us a whole, okay? Then let's take away the other next fraction, where by now you observe that the denominators are the same, okay? So, we can maintain the, the denominator and we subtract the numerators. So, 5 minus uh, 4, what do you get? 5 minus 4, we shall have uh, 1, and this is out of 5. And this is your answer. Have you checked properly if it was that one? Lastly, we had uh, number six. What fraction must be added to a quarter to get a whole? 
this number is not far from this one. Because somebody is looking at the addition. No, we are not adding. What fraction can we add to this a quarter to get a whole? Means a whole is bigger than a quarter, okay? So it's a matter of getting a whole still, you can see, and we take away a quarter. Have you seen number five and number six, how related they are? So we shall also form a whole using our denominator, which is four out of four, or four quarters. Four quarters is the same as a whole. Take away one quarter. These are four quarters, take away a quarter. Keep the common, common denominator, which is four, and we have four, take away one. So how many quarters shall we remain with? Somebody saying three quarters. Very good. And that means if I have three quarters and I add it, if I have these three quarters and I add it to a quarter, I come back with a whole. Okay? Here we are looking at the concept of a whole. And I think you can check number two, number three. So for me, I've answered for you number one, number four, number five. And number six, hope you really did it very well. So today, by the way, this marks the end of our fraction topic. I want to let you know that this marks the end of our topic of fractions. Right off from where we started from, up to here. Hope you've gotten enough from fractions and you won't forget, okay? So I welcome you today's lesson uh, this is none other than geometry. Everybody said geometry. Geometry, I think you can spell this word geometry, and it's, it's spelled as G E O M E T R Y. Geometry. Somebody may ask himself, herself, what do we mean by geometry? And how does it help, by the way? So, uh, when I say geometry, this is a study. We may, by the way, write this definition very well. For you, even if after this lesson, you will continue reading the definition, then as you follow exactly what we are going to talk about. So we say geometry, geometry is the study of the properties of the properties and relationship and the relationship relationship of the points I will explain all these things points lines and the surfaces of shapes. Allow me to explain this. Geometry is the study of properties and the relationships of the points, lines, and the surfaces of shapes. So in short terms, we shall be looking at figures. And under the figures, we shall look at how these figures look like and how they are related. For example, to look at the lines that maybe the sides that are on the square, the corners, the vertices, the edges, those are the relationships we shall be looking at. But it will be a general study of all, of all shapes. As we shall see, just shall be looking at the edges, faces, uh, surfaces, and vertices, okay? That's why this involved the points. The point can be a corner. We shall be seeing the line. Line, those are edges. I don't mean edges of how old I am, but edges to mean, uh, I mean the edge of this, okay? Now, then surfaces. Surfaces it is when we should look at the area uh, or volume like that. That will be the relationship in short. That's what we mean by geometry. 
So we shall be looking at, in most cases, the shapes. The shapes as you learned some shapes in P3. Likewise, we are going to have the same shapes. And we see how best we can uh, move about them. So now, under this geometry, these shapes are categorized into two. In other, they are grouped. They have groups. So the first group of these shapes, we are going to see what we call two dimension. Dimensional shapes or figures, whatever you may call it. We also have the second group, it is three dimension, dimensional figures or shapes. Now again, you are asking yourself, eh, what is this you are talking about? But we shall not talk about all of them at once. We shall first deal with one group. And now, this group I want you to deal with today uh, is none other than two-dimensional figures or two-dimensional shapes. Two-dimensional, spell the word dimension, D-I-M-E-N-S-I-O-N-A-L, dimension. So if I'm to deal with two dimension, dimensional shapes, Now, these two-dimensional shapes, sometimes they are also called flat shapes. Flat shapes. Others call them, uh, if we don't call them flat shapes, call them plain shapes. Plain shapes. Why do we call them plain? If I talk about a square, for example, when you look at this piece of paper, you know it's, uh, if I can tell you which shape could be this paper, somebody will say a rectangle. The dimension I'm talking about, it has the other one, which is the length and the width. In other words, you'll find that it has also this flat part and even the other one. So, then if we are to look for the perimeter, we look for the area, we shall only deal with the length and the width. Unlike, unlike the three dimensions, because we shall also see them. So now, let's look at these plain shapes. I think this is not there. Plain shapes. Let's look at the examples of plain shapes or flat shapes or what you call two-dimensional shapes, or two-dimensional figures. When you hear the word figures and the shapes, there is no big difference, okay? So the examples of shapes or figures that have two dimensions will have the commonest, that is square. Or somebody can say squares, okay? Another Common one and the major one we also look at rectangles, as I have just said. Other shapes we look at only two sides is called these are triangles. Okay. Other shapes here we can also look at circles. Very many we can also have the kites. We can also have the rhombus. Those are all plain shapes. Somebody can also talk about the parallelogram. We shall see all these shapes, how they are drawn. We can also look at the trapezium. I want you to master these spellings because with the time we shall meet these words uh, under our angles. So, find that at least, but I want you to look at this first group I've given you, 
Those are what we call the major two-dimensional figures. Major two-dimensional figures. We have squares, we have rectangles, we have triangles and circles. The rest are also two-dimensional figures, but in details, P4 level, we cannot see them. We look at them in P6, P7. P4 level, we shall just look at these ones under two-dimensional figures. That means this, if I'm to capture the area, I look at two sides. If I come to look for area or perimeter, two sides. This is the same. Circles, the same, okay? Yes. So now, from here, having seen the major two-dimensional figures as squares, rectangles, uh, triangles, and circles, look around how you are around uh, your home, around your area. Do you have some uh, things around you that are in square form? Find out. Look around. Look this way. Look this side. Do we have them there? You also have time to check under your, uh, around your house, your compound, your neighbors. Do you have, can you see shapes or things that are in the shape of rectangles? Do you, have you seen anything at your home which is the shape of a triangle? What about a circle? There are very many there. Think about it and look around. You'll see them. Okay? Now, let's see how these shapes are drawn. We know that you must have seen them in P3, P2, but let's remind ourselves. Uh, these shapes, uh, somebody saying, uh, let's say, naming and drawing. Uh, flat shapes. We can call them flat or two-dimensional figures. We can call them figures. We can also call them shapes. Let's draw and name them. Then it is your turn now to make sure that what I write and what I draw, you observe it very well, okay? The first one here you have, let me hope you are able to see what I've drawn here. Then I want you after to talk about this shape, you name it and you tell me what you can observe. And I've put a dash here. Somebody can tell me exactly which shape could be this one. Very good. Somebody has already said it's a square. How many sides does it have? Very good. Somebody saying four sides. We are seeing one, two, three, and four. Okay? But talk about the sides. Do you observe anything under the sides of a square? Oh, somebody has already said it. That all sides are equal. All the four sides are equal. Very good. Lastly, have you seen these marks I've put in every corner? Good. Right angles. Somebody saying right angles. So a square to be a good square must have four right angles, must have four equal sides as you have seen. And this is what we call a square. Have you seen it? Let me take that one. So we can also have the second one. Observe carefully. Maybe we shall see that there are some relationship between these shapes I've drawn. Have you seen that one? Could it be the same as what I've drawn? Just I want you to observe, okay? Then come here and observe. And you tell me whether these shapes are similar. 
it can't be. Why? We look at here the teacher has put two marks and the other one is one one. On the first one it is one 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 one. Here this and this equal then the other one. So what which shape could be this one? Very good. This is a rectangle. Can you talk about it? Let's talk about it. Yes. Somebody saying two opposite sides are equal. Two opposite. So this side is opposite this one and they are very equal. Okay? And likewise, this side is equal to the other one. So this is opposite to the other one. They are equal. So we say two opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. What else have you observed here apart from the two sides being, two opposite sides being equal? Very good. We can also talk about that, oh, a rectangle has four sides. Good. So it has this side, it has the other one, the other one, the other one. But remember, they are not equal. They are not equal. Unlike the sides of a square where they are very equal. Okay? Talk about something else here. Yes, right angles. It also has four right angles. For a good rectangle must have uh, these right angles. As we move under geometry, you will see how important these right angles are. You will know what is a right angle. Okay? So, this is a rectangle. As I've said, the major two-dimensional figures, we are going to look at the squares, the rectangles, the triangles, and the circles. Let me have the third one. Have you seen that one? This figure with three sides. Three sides. The, this figure with three sides is none other than triangle. Say triangle. So, tell me what you have observed under the triangle. Compare the triangle and the rest that I've drawn before. Somebody saying has three sides. Very good. So, what name is given to a three-sided figure that is a triangle? Say triangle. Spell the word triangle very fast. T R I A N G L E S. Triangle. All triangles. Okay? Now, under triangles, as we move, we shall see that the triangles, some triangles have two sides which are equal. One is not equal to the other ones. We shall see other triangles where the triangles, uh, all the sides are equal. We also have them there. We also have triangles where the three sides are quite different. And we shall give them special names, okay? As we move, we shall give them special names. Uh, but that one will be under triangles. So let's look at another shape which we have said it is under major shapes that, are, that have two dimensions. And we have said... Uh, for your case, I want you to use your bottle tops when I tell you to answer these questions and draw nice shape of this kind, okay? Hey, use your bottle tops. Other people have a pair of compass compasses. And you have to tell which shape could be this one. Uh, P3, I know you looked at these shapes, but P4, we are going to look at these shapes in details. Whereby every shape can have like circles, we'll have parts of a circle. We'll have uh, under squares and uh, rectangles. We'll have perimeter and area plus other things, okay? So now, I've been drawing these major uh, two-dimensional figures whereby we say triangles, squares, rectangles, and, uh, and uh, circles, okay? So I've said this is a circle, okay? Then... We have a square, we have a rectangle, we have a triangle. Just that, from where I started from, the definition of geometry, just a study 
of uh, properties and relationship just in terms of lines, vertices, and edges of shapes. We've seen that uh, under geometry, these shapes are grouped into two, or they are categorized into two. One group of these shapes will have two dimensional figures or shapes. When you hear me using the word figures, I also mean shapes, okay? Then we also have uh, three dimensional figures, or we can call them shapes, yes? And I've said, for today, we've started with the two dimensional figures, okay? And I've said they can also be called flat shapes or plain shapes. Yeah, when you hear somebody saying, give me an example of a plain shape, uh, don't say, eh, what is a plain shape? A plain shape is the same as a two dimensional figure. So you can give a square, you can give a rectangle, you can give a kite, you can give a, a rhombus, you can give whatever, as you have seen the examples. Oh, somebody can say, give me an example of a plain shape. A plain shape uh, is also the same as two-dimensional figures. We've seen examples. Uh, we have squares, rectangles, triangles, circles, kites, rhombus, pyrograms, and trapeziums. But I've said under this, we have the four major examples of two-dimensional figures, as I have shown you here, okay? Then the other ones are also two-dimensional figures. But uh, as we move uh, from class to class, we shall also see them when you reach P6, P7. You see them in details. You also calculate their area, their whatever. Yeah, and even the drawing and lines of folding symmetry. Very many things when you go to P6. But for our case, we have seen this one. Then we say naming and drawing flat shapes. Now let's name, uh, hey, by the way, you, you are the very people to name these ones. You are going to name these shapes I've put. After naming them, uh, that means next time we shall see one by one. I will either begin with squares. We talk about squares. Everything about a square. After that, we go to a rectangle or rectangles. We talk about rectangles. Very many things under rectangles. The triangles as well. The circles as well. I want to thank you for listening to me. Hope you are going to fill in my dashes over there. Then another exercise I give you. Look around your house. Look around your kitchen. Look around your playground or just outside the house. I want you to list for me some things that are in a square form. Okay? You also give me a list of things in your house. Look around that are in the form of a rectangle, as you have seen. Also, try your best to make sure that you get for me at least a bigger list, by the way, of things around your home that are in triangular form, that are like a triangle. Lastly, you also give me a longer list of things that look like circles in your house, right away from a crock face in that sitting room, okay? Plus other things around the home. I want to do a big list for that. You have got your activity very well. When I come back, that's what I will first ask you. But for my exercise today, all my activity, make sure you fill in the names of these major uh, examples of two-dimensional figures. Thank you for listening. See you.